hello friends welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Erin and if this is your first time here welcome to booked and busy today's video is going to be my april wrap up this video is very late if you follow me on instagram you kind of know some of the things that are going on in my life right now i'm not going to get into it here but i will talk about it in an upcoming vlog but i have a lot going on but i have pressed on and pushed through to give you guys this wrap up because i did read some things in april that i really just want to talk about and I know it's like halfway through May, so some of them I read almost six weeks ago. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to just keep it quick, tell you what I think, and let's get to it. So we're gonna start out with my April reading stats. Uh, I have my computer right here, <clears throat> which I just got back yesterday, and that was also part of the problem because my computer stopped working. Anyway. Uh, I read 18 books in the month of April. I was doing the read and reading. Um, I read 8,753 pages and I listened to 74 hours of audiobooks. No rereads in the month. Um, for genres, I read two fantasy books, one paranormal book, five romances, and 10 fantasy romances i've said it before and i've and i'll say it again i am deeply in my fantasy romance era um this month i listened to three audiobooks i read 11 ebooks i read three books purely physically and i read one book that was a mixture um i read 17 novels and one novella um four of the books were debut authors two of the authors were new to me and 12 were from authors that i had read from previously uh 11 of the books were self-published and seven of them were traditionally published and that's really because like all the fantasy romance that i'm reading is uh, on ku so where I acquired these books, two of them were from my own TBR prior to 2023. One was a book that I hauled in 2023, one was gifted, nine were on Kindle Unlimited, and four were books that I hauled in 2024. Um, 15 of them were adult and three were new adult, 11 were part of a series, and seven were standalones. I think they were all fiction. Yeah, I think that's really all we need to know about stats. So as far as the books are concerned, I only have like five books that I have physical copies of right now. And then the rest were all ebooks. So it wasn't really a great month for reducing my physical TBR, uh, but I did <laughs> add to my TBR quite a bit. So let's first talk about the two fantasy books that I read. So they were in the same series. So I read The Ninth Rain and The Bitter Twins by Jen Williams. So on my Patreon, we were having a spring read along of the Winnowing Flame trilogy and the live show for book one, books one and two were in the month of April. So starting out, The Ninth Rain, this is the first book in an epic fantasy trilogy. And this one is about this world where there's this tree god, Ixeril, and Ixeril has died and because the sap of this tree is what fed these people uh, a group of people called the Eborans uh, since the death of this tree they have resorted to drinking human blood but that has come with a lot of consequences because as a result if they drink too much blood they get this disease called the, the crimson flux and they die away the important thing about these Eborans dying off is that every few generations there is this rain uh, from this alien race that comes in and tries to destroy humanity and the only people that can fight it off are the Eborans and the war beasts that are birthed from the tree god Ixeril. So in the beginning we have a cast of characters we're following a 40 to 50 year old woman who is an explorer and an adventurer and we're following an Eboran man named Tor who is her companion and her like sword arm and then we're following this young fell witch named Noon who escapes from the winery so the winery is where like the witches of the world are taken and captured and they uh, they take like life force from living things and they can make winter fire which is like this green fire and we're following these three characters as they come together and go on an adventure to try to solve a mystery kind of but they're trying to figure out 
what the remains of these people are and how if if they can save the tree god Ixero. So that plot line continues on into book two and I have to say that as much hype as this series has and as many great things as I've heard about it I really did not like it. Um so this the series is unique i can't say that i read anything like it. it it has a lot of elements in it that are very unique from the magic system to the creatures and thing beings of the world to the way the world is built out and described but i think the biggest flaw of this book and this series overall I, i've since dnf the series i've decided not to read the third book but the biggest flaw is that there isn't a very strong central plot and lots of things are introduced that go nowhere and that don't really have any bearing on the story and it's a lot of questing for questing sake uh with not a clear goal in mind beyond that while i like the characters i did not feel particularly connected to or compelled by these characters so that is primarily the reason why i'm not continuing on with the series i think it's unique i think it's fun but and and also like for the most part of all the people in my patreon that read it n there are very few people who actually enjoyed it and even the people who enjoyed book one didn't go on to enjoy book two and i think there's only one person in my entire patreon that was participating in the read along that is planning to read the third book and even they didn't enjoy the second book so that's rather unfortunate um we're i'm gonna go i was gonna categorize these uh but first i want to just get through the books that i own physically so <clears throat> i read just for the summer by abby Menez. this is one of my most anticipated books of the year and probably my most anticipated romance this is like the third book in the part of your world companion series which you don't have to have read the two books prior to read this but <clears throat> I do think there's like a higher level of impact if you have read them because of some of the things that happen later on in the series. So in this one we're following our two main characters Justin and what is her name? Emma. And Justin has this curse on him that every time he dates a girl she go the next person that she goes on to date is like her husband or her soulmate. And so he makes a post about this on reddit and our main character emma has a similar situation so they just come up with this plan that they're gonna date each other and then when they break up they're gonna find their forever person and it is their romance um <clears throat> the cover and the title all you know lead you to believe this is a really fun summer romance and on the surface it is that but both emma and justin have really complex relationships with their mothers and those things play a large part in the story uh justin's mom and this is in the synopsis um <clears throat> justin has to assume care of his three younger siblings so he's going from being like a single man living on his own to being the primary caregiver for three children of varying ages i think the youngest is like four and the oldest is like 14 and then emma her, her she was removed from her mom's care because of neglect and she was raised in the foster care system and her mom has like filtered in and out of her life at various points and she has a very complicated relationship with her mom that plays heavily in her everyday life and in her romance relationship with Justin and as much as I loved Emma and Justin <clears throat> Emma's thought process and Emma's relationship with her mom it just took it took over too much of the story for me and I understand that the things that were happening were like a large part of her life and they really were impacting her but uh, as much as I was enjoying the romance, I, I couldn't enjoy it because I feel like Emma had this like holier than thou attitude about things. Um, and I read this in a reading blog, so I will, if I remember, I will link the reading blog where I read this and you can get like more of my in the moment thoughts. But the romance itself was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was moving. It was touching. I loved Emma and Justin for each other. But like the things that were happening outside of the romance were just a bit much. And I feel like so many romances where it's like you, you cannot get a romance that has really gr good like character depth and dynamic without them having like a tortured past and like all these terrible things happening to them so that's that <clears throat> and then the next three are fantasy romances that i have physically so i read both the veil kingdom i read this for a vlog uh, i actually read this when i was in mexico but this one wasn't included in my vacation vlog this is a fantasy romance about this young woman who is a princess and she is the, the daughter of the king in this world but <clears throat> 
for reasons unknown at the beginning of the story she is living and working as like not a vigilante but like she's living on the edge and she's like working as a thief and she gets mixed in with the rebellion and the other par character that we're following is the son of the rebellion leader he brings her in and she keeps her identity as the princess of this realm secret and she is getting involved with the son of the rebellion leader while trying to maintain her, her secrecy and they are looking for this princess because they think that she is pivotal to the the takedown of the king and things like that and also there's like this elemental magic in this world as well i enjoyed this i thought it was fun um and you'll see more of my thoughts in that vlog that is coming in that same vlog i also tried to read lore of the wilds but i had to dnf this 90 pages in because it was really horrible um <clears throat> it's poorly written it yeah it's just mainly poorly written it's poorly written the character work is abysmal um <clears throat> It just wasn't good like i have no good things to say about this book it's been a minute since i tried to read it but i could see where it was going and i hadn't heard any good things about it and as i was reading i was like this is just so silly this doesn't make sense like is it like it has like the complexity of like middle grade but then you could tell that there's like this romance developing and like our main character lore was just a really poor decision maker and i understand <clears throat> that she doesn't have like the highest education and she's in a vulnerable situation but she just had no thoughts in between her ears and it's just I, I couldn't do it i couldn't do it and because i had already seen so many negative reviews i didn't have any hope of it getting better and i didn't like the character and i didn't like the writing uh so beyond that the last one that i have physically is also i read this for a vlog so you'll see more of my thoughts in this vlog but this is a song with the mark by sm gaither the first book in the shadows and crown series this is an adult uh fantasy romance series um originally self published but it's recently been picked up by penguin i don't know if that's in the u.s or in the uk but whatever <clears throat> this one is one that was challenging because i started this out physically and i just couldn't get into it like something about this author's writing just doesn't work for me and now that we're in may and i have tried another one of her books i'm like i don't know what it is so i switched to the audiobook and i really did like the audiobook i, I listened to this in two sittings and this is a completed fantasy romance series there are five books <clears throat> so i i main character cassia graythorn who is working as a mercenary and she is a person who has had this fading sickness in this world and it like bleaches the color from your hair and your eyes and your skin <clears throat> and in this world uh the king the former king used to collect people that had this fading sickness and try to cure them but everyone in his care mysteriously died and so she is one of only two people who've had the fading sickness but has stayed alive for a number of years and so the only other person that we all know and she knows is her mentor and so she is working to get this like rare medicine that her that like helps her mentor's condition and while she's doing that she crosses paths with a lander who is the captain of the king's guard and like the royal like task force to collect like magical people and things like that <clears throat> and ultimately i don't know why my nose is itching so badly okay i don't know what's going on with that but she has this like romance with him and there's this plot line of her trying to figure out what's going on with the gods and she is meddling with gods and their powers and she gets embroiled in this much larger scheme than what she initially set out to do <clears throat> i also read the second book in this series which uh further picks up right from where the first book left off it's called a twist of the blade <clears throat> and uh, i really like the romance between these two uh leander and cassia and i like kind of how badass cassia is like for uh a lot of main characters she is very capable i feel like she is very intelligent and she even though she can be very impulsive which can be annoying i think that she ultimately like makes a lot of good decisions and is very like action-packed and very plot heavy and in this world there are these like gods at the top and then there's these middle gods and the servants of those people and they can also increase their power by giving a little bit of their power to various people in the world and having those people use their magic and like pray to them and all these other things so 
I am enjoying that series. I've started the third book. I'm reading the third book now. It's not a new favorite and it's not one that I'm like you need to go out and read but it is fun enough to pass the time and I do think the audiobooks are really good so I would recommend like checking out the audiobook if you're interested. I have my Goodreads pulled up because like the theme of the month of April really was marathoning series. Um, so <laughs> a lot of what I read were like two series. Uh, another thing that I read was Mafia Devil by Mila Finelli. This was a novella in the like Kings of Italy Mafia Mistress series. Uh, and this one takes place during the events of, I want to say, book three. The one that follows uh, the son, the, the son that's gay. And so I enjoyed it. It was a bit quick read. It was like 100 pages. I read it in one sitting and I enjoyed it. I think if you like dark romance, if you like mafia romance, uh, I definitely recommend the Kings of Italy series because I really enjoy it. Mafia Mistress and Mafia Darling were like five star reads for me and I reread them at the beginning of the year and they were still just as good as I remember. So, you know, if you're interested. Uh, I also read Wild Love by Elsie Silver. This is the first book in the Rose Hill series. I read this when I was in Mexico. So if you want like in-depth thoughts, I would check out my vacation blog. This was horrible this was horrible it was too long the characters were boring it was bland I just I just don't recommend it like I won't be continuing on with that series and I don't I don't it's really negatively impacted my opinion of Elsie Silver as an author because I feel like she was I enjoy her indie work or at least I enjoy it for the most part the Chestnut Spring series there were some books that I didn't enjoy as much but this one just the romance wasn't believable it was too long it was corny it like the grant afford and the girl they whatever they had no chemistry and it just there was nothing redeemable about that book it was so long like it took me three hours to read 50 pages and i was doing nothing else that's how difficult it was to get into and to and really i should have took that as a sign to not continue on but here we go speaking of awful romances and it's not really a romance but it's marketed as a romance how to end a love story by yulin kwang i said in that vlog that I, if i hated you i wouldn't recommend that book and i still stand by that uh i don't think this is a romance but let's say it is it is a love story but it is a very melancholic i would say miserable book um it is a book following a screen a, a writer who is getting the opportunity to screen write for the adaptation of her book and uh, the tragedy that has befallen upon her life is that when she was graduating from high school, her younger sister committed suicide via jumping off a bridge onto oncoming traffic. And the love interest is the guy who was driving the car that impacted with her sister's body. And it's, you know, 13 years later, something like that. And they're working together on this show adaptation. And like the specter of her sister's death is very much heavy and present. And like they're dealing with that. and. I have read heavy romances and have enjoyed them but even beyond that I don't think that these two had any chemistry at all. They were both boring and miserable and pitiful and I don't think I'll ever read anything from Yulin Kwong again and I wouldn't recommend you do so either. So after that I read Butcher and Blackbird by Bren Weaver the first book in the Ruinous Love trilogy. This is like a dark rom-com because we're following these two serial killers who fall in love um and for a book about serial killers it ha didn't had it had didn't have as much killing as i thought that it would i enjoyed that this was fun i feel like the first half was better than the second half uh because that's the the, the like setup of the game because they decide they're gonna meet up once a year and have this competition where they're gonna have seven days to kill someone but they have to figure out who it is uh and then when the the serial killerness of it all like lightens up and it comes more about the romance i was less interested because i'm like i feel like you know if you were a serial killer i feel like it would pay a larger part in your life but once they got together the main girl she really just stopped killing people outside of their work together and i'm like well that's boring you shouldn't give up your hobbies for a man but you know whatever uh, I enjoyed it, so I will be continuing on and reading Leather and Lark when it comes out. Uh, the Paranormal that I read was Midnight and of Ashes by Tessa Hale, the second book in the Dragons of Ember series. And this is just a fun little one-sitting read, but my issue with this is, so far, 
the first two books in the series have been like 250 pages each and they really just could be one book like there's nothing significant that happens between the two books that you need to separate them as well as they're not being like a one specific arc that's happening across each book like it, it almost feels silly to me not to make them one book especially when KU authors get paid per like page turns I feel like you could just put them together and it'd be one book especially because they came out like within two months of one another so you know it's a fun little time about this girl who moves to this new city and she finds out that she's like a dragon shifter and she's made it to these five dragons and there are people who are after her because dragon female dragon shifters are very rare and when you have a dragon like bonded it increases the your power and the power of everyone in your bonded group and so there are people who are out to get her to steal her away and these also people might be responsible for the death of her parents because her parents were murdered when she was a child and they were looking for her because they found out that her parents had had a female dragon shifter fun you know fun silly time wouldn't recommend you buy it. i would definitely say like check it out on ku it's a quick silly little read but it was fun and i read it like on my bus ride from tulum to cancun airport um and then the last thing that i want to talk about i read books two through five of the lady of darkness series so i read lady of shadows lady of ashes lady of embers and lady of starfire and i can i can't say too much but mostly k rourke is definitely my favorite fantasy my second my favorite fantasy romance author period between the legacy series and the lady of darkness series this is my favorite fantasy romance world and there's no competition so i read lady of darkness the first book at the end of march and then as soon as april started that was my first week of april and i just marathon that series like i read the entirety of the five books over two weeks um lady of darkness we're following our main character scarlet who is an assassin and she was raised by the assassin lord to be this weapon but something has happened to scarlet a year prior to the series starting and she is now living outside of the like assassin compound and she is not working with her master and she is almost lost inside herself because she has gone through some trauma that we unpack as the series goes on but shortly after the story starts she meets this man who is training this like elite force of the royal army and they instantly have this connection and she's intrigued by him and it's like she's kind of brought out of this like stupor that she's in and they decide to work together and there is something happening in this kingdom that orphan children are starting to go missing and she is very concerned about them because these are the children that are going missing from the area that the assassin compound is in and she feels like no one is taking it seriously and so she's gotten involved with with this hunt to figure out what's happening to the children and she w thought that she had solved that issue but it's come back up and there are more things that are happening and prior to the start of the story many years ago her mom was murdered in front of her and this is the thing that is being dangled in front of her that the assassin lord would tell her who is responsible for killing her mother and set her and give her her revenge if she completes this task for him which is to kill someone and it is a story it's so much more than that um but it is a story of found family it is a story of like darkness and grief and it really explores mental health um so highly recommend looking into like the trigger warnings content warnings because it, it can be very dark and like the first book does is like her first book and so it can be repetitive and it has some things like i am the darkness like try to put me in a cage those types of things but i really think the story that she's telling is just so amazing and the world building the little easter eggs and like things that have been dropped in that you see as the series develops as you move forward in her world just seeing the amazing things that she is doing like she posted on her Instagram story this like graphic that she has this like nine series interconnected universe plant and I'm just so happy that I can be along for the ride. Highly recommend um, the Lady of Darkness series. It is fantastic. It is completed. It is on KU. The audiobooks are on Hoopla if you have that. I personally would recommend reading it physically because that's how I read it and so I just think you'll like it better physically. But if you're an audiobook person, the audiobooks are available. But yeah, I just, I love this series. I love this series. I think I love Legacy a little bit more, probably because I read it first. And also, like, 
because I read Legacy, I can see the connections to the things between Lady of Darkness. But Lady of Darkness is so amazing. Like, I already want to reread it. I think about it every day. And I just, I just think you should read it. It's, it's amazing. It's top tier adult uh, fantasy romance. So, this has been my April reading. It's been a mixed bag of a month. I'm sorry if this wrap up isn't as detailed as my wrap ups usually are. Uh, I'm having a hard time and even as you can see like my nose is really bothering me but I hope this was enjoyable if you made it to the end of the video let's leave a nose emoji since my nose is giving me such a hard time let's leave a nose emoji and I will see you in my next one goodbye